tight end. Three one. It's over. How about that expected goals? 3.39 to 0 0.28 in this one. Manchester City dominant. They win three to one. If I might suggest a place to start for us, Kevin De Bruyne, spectacular today. Well, just getting better as he gets fitter and sharper after what missing half the season with injury. Uh, so yeah, no surprise there. Phil Foden clearly has been in terrific form uh, the last couple of months, getting better and better. Uh, where do you stop with City? I mean, I suppose the only thing would be they're winning, but I, I see some frustration, particularly early on in the game in, in Erling Haaland, and maybe Jan can touch on this, and that, that, that they do so much with the ball around the field from side to side, and he's making a lot of runs, and they, do, they, they don't like to force a pass. Uh, and they don't always look for that pass, and I think there is some frustration there for, from, from his perspective. He did get some chances in the second half, which was a little unfortunate, and keeper made some saves, but... But, yeah, he has to sort of almost bite his tongue sometimes because as a striker, as, you know, Jan and Ali or no, a striker always thinks they've made the right run for the right pass and it should, that should have been the ball. And he's making a lot of runs, but that's the way Man City play. Sometimes he's not really heavily involved and as long as he can accept that, and it seems like he has pretty well, as long as he can accept that and he pops up and gets his quota goals in the big games at the right time, I don't think it'll be a problem. But certainly from a front man's perspective... I would imagine it could be pretty frustrating. But look, Copenhagen, we got what we expected. You know, we've got Scott McKenna at the back. He used to play for Aberdeen. He's surplus requirements at Nottingham Forest, uh, who are in the bottom of the English Premier League. And here he is playing in the knockout stages of the Champions League. That's kind of where Copenhagen are compared to the best team in Europe. Right. Let's bring it back to Holland. Obviously, he didn't get on the score sheet today. Jan, what did you think of his performance? Oh, I think uh, Craig did good on that and telling us how he did in a game. It's a bit frustrating when you're doing all that those runs. Remember, he's been out for a long time, and I think that goalkeepers and strikers need some time to find that rhythm. Of course, it helped when you score two goals, as he did against Everton on Saturday. And today as well, at the end there, he came through, the goalkeeper saved, and he was a bit frustrated standing behind the goal and thinking, wow, I have to get into the game again. Then he got a header and the keeper saved that as well. But I think there is no danger there. He will get, get in form, as will Manchester City. And I think, boys, if we saw Manchester City the last 10, 15 minutes of the game, they were desperate to get that 3-1. Why? Because that is so important for them, because this... Uh, next game against Copenhagen will be between Man Manchester United game and the Liverpool game. They can kind of plan it a bit. So De Bruyne coming into form, Foden on fire at the moment. You have John Stones back. Erling Haaland will statistically score a lot of goals coming into this. So I think that with Haaland thing, he just needs this game to get into to it. But... They have to find him again, and I agree with Craig. There were a couple of three times today they should have found him earlier. But the, the, we had that part last season as well. There were period where they, they couldn't find him right. But as we saw against Everton, De Bruyne passed to him the 2-0 the goal, world class. And, and that is exactly the point. And that's why perhaps it's frustrating for Erling Haaland that Kevin De Bruyne finds him in the manner in which he did against Everton. And yeah, it's a through ball, but... Erling Haaland essentially tells the defender, get off me, right? <coughs> get off me. Hit the weight room. You can't stay with me. You can't stay with this physicality, with this strength, with this speed. And there are multiple times in which he makes those runs that Craig and Jan have alluded to, in which they just kind of, I'm going to give it. No, I'm not going to give it to him. We're going to go sideways. And, and so if I'm Erling Haaland from the perspective of the striker, and I just prove as I've done time and time again, that if you put me in a 50-50 challenge with a defender and you just let me run and let me stretch my legs, I'm going to win most of those challenges. I'm going to get to that ball first and I'm going to create a chance for myself and I'm going to score a goal. I just did it this past week. And yet you, you still don't play me. That has to be frustrating because you, you cannot go, hold on, I've proven that you play me that ball, I'm going to score. What are, we doing, what are we doing here to do? To, what are we here? Do, we want to score a goal, right? Play me the through ball. If I, if I give you the run, play me the through ball. That's what I'm here for. Use me and use my assets. Use my skill. Use, use what I bring to this team. That sometimes I think can be frustrating, not only for Erling Haaland. It's frustrating for me watching it because I, I am seeing the move of the striker and yet they don't use him properly. I still don't think that they use Erling Haaland to the best of his abilities. I don't want to be too picky on Manchester City. They did win 3-1 yeah. away. Oh, and then pick him. 
Pick Ederson, them. the Ederson mistake. At that moment of the game, I know it's how they play, but like, why? It just seems like such an unnecessary risk. Have you noticed how all these teams play these days? There's, not, there's no point us sitting here saying, oh, kick it long. That, that ship has sailed. It's gone, right? It's sunk. They're just not doing it now. Is there a difference between, OK, he's not going to kick it long, but he's going to play it right down the middle when well, he's up one a... nothing look, away look, in the look, Champions look, League, look, the game totally yeah, under control? Champions League final, five minutes to go. There's a different scenario, right? It, it would probably lump it up the field. But whether we like it or not, and back in the day, the goalkeeper lumped everything. Ask Shaka. Yeah. <laughs> Ask him. It went, it was like a hot potato. It went as far away from the goal as possible. But the game has just changed. Whether we agree with these little instances in the game or not, I bet his manager's not in and addressing him saying, I, I told you to kill. Say, just be better, take more care. It, it is what it is now. Would that sympathy come along, maybe in a much bigger game that's got more at stake if they were playing Real Madrid or whatever? Maybe not, but we just have to accept that mistakes are, are going to happen, and it's across the board. It's, a, it's almost across the board now with, with all the goalkeepers at every club and every league. And to your question, and to Seb, is it the moment of the game call for something different because you allow this, the fan and you allow Copenhagen to get into a game that they were not a part of, and you gave them the life. And if I were to be critical of Manchester City, I would say that this season, if there is something that you can point at, is so many different types of mistakes that they have made in the defensive half that allows teams into games that you were in full control of. And you think of Crystal Palace, for example. Crystal Palace should not be playing on the same field with Manchester yeah, exactly. City. And, and yet it has happened. So you, you want to clean this up if you're Manchester City. You want to clean it up in Champions League. You want to clean it up in the Premier League as well. Because those are the only reasons as to why this team want to achieve the things that they want to achieve and they should be good enough to achieve this season. The fact that they continue to make these little silly mistakes that we kind of, kind of brush under the, under, the, under the table and under the rug because they go on to win matches, but it, that should not be the case, certainly not late into, this late into but, the season. But, but we have to put it, but first of all, Edison has the best foot of all goalkeepers in the world. I mean, he is a, has a fantastic foot. Pep Guardiola will say that if he does one mistake, it, it will add up to all the things that open up from the back. And I'm with Craig, that ship has sailed. I sometimes, I see so many football games and I see in every round uh, uh, teams concede playing out from the back. But Manchester City, well, they can do their mistakes and as long as they do that in Copenhagen, that, that won't be a problem. And I can't, I, yes, you can say that's the only way you can concede goals uh, being Manchester City, but they've been a bit sloppy before they started with this unbelievable run uh, that they're in uh, at the moment. So, but Edison... They will do it. And I'm with Craig that he, Pep Guardiola will say to him, well, next time, do that pass better, not lump it up to a big striker from Norway without teeth. And I'm speaking of me in the 90s. <laughs> uh, one last thing on City, I guess the injuries, Grealish, Bernardo Silva, how significant could those be? Obviously, maybe not for the second leg of this, but looking at what's coming in the Premier League and beyond. Great players. But I've, I've, I've been saying for weeks now, you, you need not look at the City lineup. And worry. Hmm. You look at the other teams and you go, oh. unless they get six or seven injuries to real, the real stars, you looked at the bench in the last two or three games and, and whether he plays Oscar Bob, who the youngster who's been brilliant, whether he plays, you know, any of these guys, Rico Lewis or, or any of them, uh, I, I don't really think at this stage of the season it's going to have... Uh, too much effect. Great players, particularly Bernardo Silva, who's played a huge part, uh, said, but the one thing I don't do when City are playing at the moment is, is look at the starting 11, because they've probably got about a starting 18 or 19 that can all come in and are quality footballers, so I don't think it's going to I affect think, them. I think, Craig, the only thing that can avoid Manchester City in terms of injuries, if something happened to Rodri, we know that, if something happened to Haaland, if something happened to De Bruyne, the rest is replaceable, if that's an English word for it, because they have the, the broad squad that they do. But to win one or two or three titles, my, I, my, my view is that they have to keep these three players not only fit, they have to keep them in form. Well, they've had De Bruyne out, as you know, Jan, and they've had Haaland out at times this season, and they've coped. Julian Alvarez has been fantastic. What, Bowden, a, too, yeah. Yeah. what a signing he's been when he came in 
Uh, was it River Plate he came? Yes. When he comes in from River Plate, yeah. you're thinking, he's going to sit in the bench, but he's just, he's been so good for them. I mean, he was a World Cup winner, for God's sake. But it's tough getting in this city side. Ask, ask Calvin Phillips and other players. Riyad Mahrez, it took him a while to get in the side, and then he, he, he was brilliant before he hot-footed it to, to Saudi Arabia. But out of those three players you mentioned, they've coped without two of them, admirably. I don't think, actually, I don't think they cope without Rodri. He's for, the one. For a he's sustained period, I think he's the best all-round midfielder, defensive side of it, but all-round in world football at the moment. I, 